Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Back to the Feminine, where I motivate and inspire women, especially black women, to make better choices for themselves and their future generations. So today I am going to be focusing on the topic of first dates. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up and some of you guys are getting ready to go on your first date with a new gentleman and I'm just going to give you guys some pointers. Um, <clears throat> this is especially for younger women who may not have been taught certain things um, and may not just have certain social cues. So I'm going to go through, you know, some pointers here for you guys. This is especially necessary to know if you are going on a date with a potential provider, um, a masculine man. This is a more feminine way of approaching your first date. So the first tip for a first impression is you got to dress the part. The way that you dress when you meet a man for the first time is a very big deal. Okay, men are visual, number one. And number two, with men, especially first impressions are a very, very, very big deal. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys pay attention to sometimes when a guy talks about a girl or like his first interaction with her. And it's normally about something that she's wearing. Um, you know, oh, I, the first thing I noticed about her was she had this really pretty blouse on or, you know, oh, she smelled really good. She had um, a pink ribbon in her hair or something like that. They are very visual. And the first impression that lasts for them is generally a visual impression. And so I wanted to um, I wanted to talk more about the way that you dress in terms of when you first meet a guy um, on a date. Do not dress overly provocative. OK, as much as you might be tempted to show off you know, your chest, if you have a really nice size chest or your, your butt or whatever, your legs, do not show too much, okay? Any man that's trying to take you seriously is not going to be impressed at the fact that you have everything just all out on the table, like, you know, just all out there. Um, you can wear something that is fitting and something that shows off your curves, but it's also reserved enough that you are not exposing, overexposing yourself. OK, so um, <clears throat> a nice skirt and a blouse and any skirt or dress that you wear on a first date should at least touch your knees um, or like maybe just above the knee. But any no mini, mini dresses or mini skirts, it's not really a good first date impression. And it gives off the wrong impression because um Unfortunately, um, as we all know, most men associate what you're wearing to your um, to who you are as a woman, basically. So if you're wearing something skimpy and something, you know, where your titties are falling out of your, your dress or something like that, um, it looks bad and it makes you look, you know, dare I say, a little bit cheap. Um, leave something to the imagination. Leave something to, you know leave something for him to think about. Um, especially with black women, you know, we are hypersexualized in the media and, you know, a lot of black women feel like the only thing that's going to captivate a man is our backsides, how big it is, how big our chest is, how small our waist is. Um, you know, our physical, our body shape, our body type, we're always so concerned about, oh, you know, I got to show this off. I got to show that I have a big butt or whatever. No, you don't. You don't. OK, you don't. Your face is beautiful. Your personality is great. Um, and you know how to play the part. You don't have to overexpose yourself. OK, the next tip, no phones at the table. Um, this should sound like it's pretty um, common sense, but it's actually not. A lot of people leave their phone on the table and they even leave it on loud. If you're going to leave your phone um, on, leave it on in your bag. But personally, I think you should put your phone on either airplane mode or put it on do not disturb or even vibrate and leave it in your purse. Um, let everyone important know that you are busy during this time and only contact you if it's an emergency or something like that. Because think about it. If you even if you have your phone in your bag, if your phone is constantly ringing and going off the entire dinner, OK, he might assume that you have a boyfriend or, you know, you have somebody that's looking for you. 
And even if you do have another boyfriend or you do, you're dating multiple people and you're not trying to disclose that necessarily. Um, because remember, dating doesn't necessarily mean you're intimate. If you're dating multiple people, you might not want them to know that. Um, and so you don't want your phone going off because his first inclination is to think, well, does she have a boyfriend that's looking for her? You know, is she, is she single? Does she have a baby daddy that's trying to get in contact with her? Um, so just keep that in mind. Also, if you are a businesswoman and your phone is going off, um, it gives a masculine impression, right? Because when we think of a businessman, you think of a businessman, he's running from meeting to meeting, he's checking his watch, he's checking his phone, he's checking the time. Um, it's, it's like a masculine thing. So if you're, even if you own a business, you, you, you know, don't tell him that right away, but even if you own a business or you are a businesswoman or, you know, something like that, and people are constantly trying to reach you, it's a bit of a turnoff because it's more of a masculine thing. You want to show him that you're focused on him. You want to show him that you're paying attention to what he's saying. You want to show him that you're engaged and you're listening. Okay. You want to be present because a man gets bored really easily with a woman that is not fun to be around. I think anybody would get bored quickly with that. So if, if you're constantly on your phone or checking your phone or on social media, it's, you're going to be boring. He's not going to want to see you again because he's not going to want to pay money for a dinner that you're just going to be staring at your phone the whole time. Okay. This is a big tip. <clears throat> Very big point. Um, do not at all bring up your ex. Do not bring up your past relationships. Do not bring up anything to do with the past. You know why? Because it's the past and he doesn't really care. I don't know why. I have zero clue why this is even a conversation topic. Um, but I've realized that a lot of people tend to ask about, oh, so, you know, what happened between you and your ex? Why are you single? You know, why aren't you with someone? The way you answer that question is simple. If someone says to you, what happened with your ex? What happened? Why aren't you guys together? All you need to say is that we didn't click. That's it. Oh, oh, my ex. Oh, you know what? It, nothing major. We just, we just didn't click. We just didn't click. Yeah. Yeah. Two different, you know, two different people. Something like that. Something very, very vague and very just brush it off type of thing. Um, you know, and then if they ask, oh, so why are you still single? You know, why, you know, something like that. You can say, oh, you know, I just wanted to take some time to focus on myself. And now I feel like I'm ready to start meeting new people. Something like that um, or something along those lines is great. Okay. Do not say, oh, I'm single because my man, he cheated on me and, you know, he couldn't treat me right. And uh, don't do not. OK, do not. Oh, I, I'm single because my man went to jail for six months and I, I didn't want to wait on him. Don't please. Like, please do not do that. Another thing I notice women do a lot is they try to make themselves seem like they're a hard time and they think it's attractive. It is not cute to make yourself seem like you are difficult to be with. No man wants a headache and no man wants to be stressed out, okay? If a guy asks you, you know, why are you single? Oh, I'm single because I, I'm a lot to deal with. I, I'm, I'm hard to deal with. I haven't met a man that can handle all of this yet. It makes you seem like you're a trouble. You're going to be stressful. You're going to be a headache. And guys like, you know, masculine men like to chase. And they like something that's not so easy to get to, but they like a feminine, you know, something feminine to chase, not a overly masculine woman with a bad attitude that um, doesn't know how to act properly. OK, it's not attractive. So don't do not do that. Don't bring up your ex. Don't even don't even ask him about his ex. It's, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter to you. OK, don't ask him anything to do with anything you will find out eventually if he's in a relationship if he has kids all that you'll figure it out very quickly if you just learn to pay attention and listen but those those questions don't ask them because he's going to most likely ask them back to you 
Um, and you just don't want to bring up exes because it changes the vibration of the, the whole setup. Imagine too, if, you know, imagine if he broke up with his ex and he's a, he's a great quality man and you bring up his ex. And now instead of being excited and happy to talk to you, he's thinking, oh damn, oh man, oh, I might miss her. Oh, maybe I should call her after this date. Okay. You just, you just unnecessarily asked him about something that he should have, you know, he, he didn't need to think about. So don't do that. Um, next tip, eat properly. Um, you know, know how to use a fork and a knife properly. Uh, put your napkin on your lap so that you don't mess up your, your outfit. Um, sit close enough to the table where you don't have to bring the food to you and drop it all over your chest. What are some other things? Um, don't tap your, um, your utensils on your plate and bang your plate with your, your knife or your fork, you know, just be, um, very poised in the way that you eat. Be mindful of what you order to eat. Don't order anything that you'll need to use your hands to eat. Okay. For the first date. Especially if you're dating a man of means or a potential, you know, potential provider, uh, a masculine man, don't order something you're going to have to be licking your fingers, you know, chicken wings, crab legs, order something that you can use a fork and a, a knife or a spoon. Um, don't tap your mouth. That is a huge thing. Do not tap your mouth and do not um, try to speak with your mouth full of food. It's not attractive. You know, this sounds like it's common sense, but you'd be amazed at how many young women do this. Um, and I see it in public. They are literally laughing out loud and their, their mouth is full of food. It's not attractive at all. Actually, years ago, I went on a date with a gentleman and he did not know how to use a knife and a fork. Okay. He was a complete dusty, um, but I was young at the time, so I didn't really clue in, but, um, yeah, it's a big deal. Know how to use a knife and a fork. Um, and know how to, you know, sit up straight and just be poised, um, you know, be mindful of that. Okay. Another huge tip. All right. Probably my last point for this video, this particular video, do not talk so much. Oh my gosh. Women, please, ladies, my loves, please do not talk too much. Okay. Learn to learn to be quiet. Okay. And you don't have to be a mute, but a part of dating and, you know, dating masculine men, men of means is they tend to like to not show off, but they want to talk about things to make themselves look good to you, right? They want to talk about their job. Um, they want to talk about, you know, what they like to do and things like that. Masculine men generally like to talk about themselves and they like to talk about things that they think will impress you. So listen, okay. Um, narcissistic men, you know, feminine men, especially narcissistic men, however, they tend to want to listen to you a lot. Not all of them, obviously. Some men are just good listeners. But um, if you pay attention, a lot of men that manipulate women, they like to be the one that listens all the time. They listen to you more than they speak because when they listen, they figure you out faster. Okay. And if their intentions are to hurt you, they let you run your mouth so that they can see ways that they can do that or they can see the type of woman that you are. <clears throat> so very important that you shut up, okay? Learn to listen. Learn to ask him questions about himself. You know, ask him to elaborate on things. Ask him to, oh, tell me more. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, could you explain more about that? And you'll see how excited they get to to talk to you about these things honestly it works every time especially with masculine men they want to impress you right they want to chase they want to impress they can't impress you if you're running your mouth okay another thing too is a lot of men they as i said they get bored easily and they like a mystery right do not talk about your childhood and your childhood trauma and what your daddy did to your mom and you know, all the things you dealt with when you were a teammate. Don't do that. Do not treat a first date like a therapy session. Some of you guys need therapy. You don't need a first date. You need therapy. Okay. A first date is not a therapy session. It's not the time to go deep down to your darkest points 
and talk. It's not the time. Okay. He's going to get bored. He's going to feel negative after. Um, and he might not want to see you again because talking to you feels like he's a therapist. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear. That. Oh, oh, that's so sad. Oh, like that's not a good conversation, right? It's not, it's not uplifting. You want when he leaves that date to think, oh my gosh, you know, she's so mysterious. I want to ask her so many more things. I have to see her again. I want to know more about her, right? If you talk too much, he's going to know everything about you within the first date. And then he's going to be bored and he's going to get tired of you and he's over it. Okay. Um, that's why I always, you know, suggest to women do not text too much because he's going to get bored of you and he's not going to want to take you out because you text it all day and you text it all night. <laughs> um, and same thing when you're on the date, don't let everything out right away. Um, you know, some, some people are really, really good conversationalists. And then some people need a bit more, um, a bit more work with it. A couple points is obviously do not discuss religion. Do not discuss politics. Um, if the topic is brought up by him, ask him his opinions and listen to him if he wants to discuss it, but do not add in any of your points just say oh, okay oh wow why do you think that oh interesting um if that should come up or try to divert the conversation because you do not want a lovely date to turn into a debate or an argument because that's not fun either um yeah so don't yeah no no politics no don't bring up your ex um you know if if he asks you questions about yourself you know Certain things don't answer them fully. Like if he asks you questions um, about like your family life or, you know, if he's trying to, you know, get deep into things, just give him the surface, right? Give him the surface level and um, don't get too, 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 too deep. Because as I said, you don't want the conversation to turn into a therapy session. You also don't want him to have a perception of you thinking, oh man, you know, she just told me her dad left when she was five. She might have daddy issues. You don't want them to think any of that stuff, okay? So for an example, you know, you sit down with a guy. And he's like, oh, so, you know, it was so lovely to meet you. I just had to see you again, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, so what do you do for a living? What do you do for hobbies, right? Um, you guys should already know. Uh, anything you do for a living, you, you know, don't go too deep into that either. Oh, I'm part-time receptionist or you know I volunteer or something like that keep it very surface level um when you're trying to find a provider man and you're dating a provider man don't go bragging on and bragging on and bragging on and that's another thing some women love to brag about their own personal achievements on a date because they think oh he's gonna want me more because I just told him about all my masters and my my BA and all my degrees and all my achievements what you actually did now is he's thinking to himself, oh my gosh, this woman is, this woman is like overqualified. I can't impress her. I can't, I can't tell her about my online business because she just told me she has five online businesses, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, just keep it, give him something to want to know later, you know, let him talk about himself more, laugh at his jokes. Don't laugh too much, you know, but you know, be, be social and, be, be beautiful, be exciting, be, be enchanting, and be mysterious. Uh, don't run your mouth, okay? So far, those are... Oh, I have um, you know one more tip, last point I'll bring out, is, is let him be masculine. If you are a date, well, you should be. This is a hypergamy channel. <laughs> if you are dating a masculine man, do not fight him down to be the masculine one. That's what we're trying not to do, okay? Do not fight him to pay. Because he asked you on the date, right? We don't ask men on dates. He asked you on the date. Do not fight him to pay the bill. Let him pay the bill and let him cover the tip. Do not fight him when he wants to take your coat or pull your chair for you or open your car door or open the door for you. Don't fight him down. Let him be the man. Let him woo you. Let him spoil you. Let him treat you well. They like to do that, okay? Masculine provider men want feminine women and this is what the channel is about i'm helping you guys 
I'm training you guys out of certain behaviors that you were used to. You know, when the bill comes to the table and you're ready, oh no, I got it, I got it, I'm good, I, I got it. No. When the bill comes to the table, you know, just look at it and leave it alone <laughs> and smile. Anyways, um, that's just, just a few points I had off the top of my head for you guys upcoming Valentine's Day. If you have any um, date night tips, you can comment them as well for other ladies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in another podcast. Bye.